Welcome to the Nexus Unloaded podcast. This is Will Crozier. And I'm Nikki Westcomb. We are the founders of Nexus Performance. Joining us on this wild ride is our heavyweight coaching team, ready to unleash the expertise to solve any problems in your journey to getting strong and jacked. Through our real world experience, we hope to break things down in a digestible, applicable and entertaining way. So pump up the volume and let's get into this. Kick us off, Mickey. Uh, Did you, is there anything you want us to <clears throat> you wanted to mention? Uh, we have a guest presenter on today. <laughs> is it Will? <laughs> we wow. have we have a guest in the room. That's what I have to, what I have to mention today. Um, a fellow Genbaru uh, coach. Um, so for those of you who are looking for app based training, um, you can obviously jump into Genbaru. Um, both of us have discount codes for. But yeah. use the use the Nexus affiliate code, not <laughs> <laughs> So go to our link in bio yeah. and go to our affiliate Don't go code. to my Don't go to hers. <laughs> one one day of yeah, just one day alternating of the programs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We'll get the kickbacks. probably get nowhere at anything, but you'll have fun doing it. I reckon she's probably got a lot more people running her programs than now, so just the way that the um industry is kind of going and being a little bit more hybrid, I suppose, with athletes, whereas <laughs> our programs aren't really hybrid do programs. Uh, do you hate the hybrid trend? Like, do you see it as a uh, trend? It's a trend at the moment. It's definitely. only a, yeah, but it's a trend, I just think, for, like, uh, it's not a bad when I trend. heard, when hybrid training came in the industry for me, like, the big person that introduced it was Alex Viata. Yeah. And his book on it. Yes. Which is a great book. Yeah. Um, everyone should read it. Complete Human Performance. Yes, his company. Yeah. And, uh, and to me, like when I read that, it was like inspiring because I was like, he runs a marathon, but he can also deadlift 700 pounds or whatever yeah. it was. Yeah. yeah. And like all these things. And it was just like, look at this fucking massive dude, like running a marathon. I was like, yeah, this is cool. Easy. And it was really interesting ways of training. Whereas now hybrid training is just a bit of a, uh, just lost a little bit of meaning in it. So mm. like, I just feel like half the people that call themselves hybrid trainers, just, I don't know, doesn't really. Mm. Not what I would call it. Yeah. Or you can you can be hybrid as in like just do different things without calling yourself that. Yeah. I find that really You hard. would be the like, most hybrid person well, I Well, let's actually introduce who this person is. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry. I forgot. This is Anna Wish, by the way. We do that Everyone welcome. Um, so uh, you are a gymnast, sprinter, ollie lifter, crossfitter, power lifter. <laughs> Dabbled in one session of powerlifting. Yeah, I did powerlifting one time. (laughs) But uh, I I don't know, have I ticked? How many boxes do we have below the training category for you? Um, You're a coach? I'm a coach. I coach CrossFit. So we should probably throw a CrossFitter in there just because I theoretically do that sometimes. (laughs) Well, you were doing that before you came here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you did the Open. I did. I I, I almost finished the Open this year. So many workouts to complete. <laughs> yeah. I literally got bored two out of three. I was oh, like, oh, I actually just don't care anymore. The last one which is so brutal. bad. But actually, the, the last one looked like it was the most fun of the bunch, and I, I still just like couldn't find. Was it single... like double unders and stuff? No, I I did that one. Oh, the, yeah, yeah. the last one was like thrusters and chest bar and muscle oh, okay. up and stuff. It yeah. was like it, stuff you'd be know. good at. Yes, it, like I probably would have done pretty well in the third one if I had bothered to do it. I just yeah. couldn't couldn't be bothered. But you just said before that you've got uh, a weightlifting comp coming up. Yes. So, like, you, uh, I'm guessing, are filling the program full of more of that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and is this your – what have you competed in before? Is this what, like – Um, CrossFit, weightlifting. I competed in gymnastics when I was a teenager a couple of times, but never very competitively. So, this will be, like, my maybe fourth or fifth weightlifting comp. Yeah. Yeah, and what are your what are your numbers in the the last one? Uh, I think I the remember. last one was seventy and eighty eight, if I remember correctly. And what's the the plan for this one? This one is actually just get back on the platform and try to go maybe even six for six. Like this is not a are you not going to push it comp? No, because this is the first like. This is the first I've been on the platform since I dropped a bar on my head. Mm. And my I'm still like concussed. still a little bit I'm still concussed, <laughs> guys. It's been eleven months. Um no, I maybe it was probably January that I was no longer having concussions. Yeah, like it wow. took a really okay. long time. So my brain's just having a hard time getting around the like 
above those numbers where it's getting close to the like mm. the barbell brain bonk like yeah. you know that kind of that yeah, moment. PTSD. Yeah, yeah so and you know what it's like there's just like that fear thing when you come back from an injury and it Absolutely. takes a while to get past that so I, yeah I think I have been bumping my head haha on this ceiling for a little bit like longer than I thought that I would and mm-hmm. coming into this prep or this comp has been a little bit like, oh, okay, I, I actually thought I was more past this than I apparently am based on what's mm. happening in the gym, you okay. know? In the last step, we had uh, Connor Walsh on who, uh, I won't say how bad, I mean, he screwed his back up pretty bad. Mm. Um, lots of bulge discs, lots of stuff just yeah. went wrong with him. And we talked about his journey from that injury, uh, the lessons learned back to to powerlifting now and he's looking at squatting 400 in a comp coming up. So, I mean, fuck, not bad. Sense. Yeah. Um, that number that you did that injury on before, is that number now that you've like conquered and, and passed? Not yet. So like it's, it's at the comp is going to be when you try and get somewhat near that. Yeah. Like in theory, if I, if I have a, if I go for like a heavy snatch on that day, then that would be when I'd be starting to like, like hit close to that number again. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I dropped, it was 75 that I dropped on my head and I haven't even hit 70 again. Like mm-hmm. I'm like, even like I'll get to weightlifting and I'm like, 69, can do. 70, no, cannot yeah. do. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. That me- the mental side definitely takes way longer to get. Even just little things like, uh, um, I was saying to Connor in the last one, my wrist, uh, I hurt like a month ago, <laughs> nothing like that, but just like a small sprain from from cleans. And oh, yeah. just getting back to it, oh, man, it's just it's like just I, I go to do it. I'm like, nah. Eh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you so throw I can't, it I can't even imagine that, though, that next level. He was being level. very dainty with it for like ages. Like he wasn't able to do um, like a lot of movements because of the, the discomfort. I don't even know what you did to it. But... Sprained this, whatever that is. That stuff. Yeah, yeah, somewhere in the – yeah. Which actually it, does a lot because you hold things Yeah, it, Yeah, it gets loaded <laughs> really annoying. all the time. Yeah. 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 But, yeah, the mental side, I can't even imagine, like, because most people when when they do – well, power looks a little bit different because the bar's not moving. Like, you don't have to have the thing land on you, whereas mm-hmm. when you do a clean or when you do a snatch, it, obviously in a, in a clean, it, it's actually landing on you. Um, and in the snatch, it's still like you have to catch it there mm-hmm. – and I know I had a lot of trouble with that because it's just so fucking weird. It's just yeah. like, why is this bar like literally like in powerlifting? My job in the setup is to get it to not move. Yeah. Like it should be a part of my body mm. because like if I push into the floor, I want it to be like a leg press, whereas the, the force is like one for one going in the ground as it is going into the bar. Mm. Whereas in that, like, it's just, I don't know. It's just so weird. It's just having this thing float and then have to maneuver around it is it? very weird yeah yeah um but you've you've done well of jumping into all the little things in, and having to go and, and being good at all of them unlike me which is just good at the one thing good enough we'll say good enough well that's what we wanted Pretty to kind good. of chat about today because um like this kind of stemmed a little bit from a conversation that i remember you having with akadi um who is your coach as well i believe at the moment yeah. yes um where he was saying to will like you know just have fun with your training and just focus on like enjoying all that sort of stuff. And like, well, it wasn't so much from that. It's, yeah. it's sort of like my, so I've been dealing with a knee issue for a long time and this knee was just pissing me off. And long story short, it's just like, it just made training not fun. Cause mm-hmm. it's like, yay, I had a good squat session, but it ruined like my next squat week. session. Yeah. 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 So I was like, fuck, it's just not worth it. And kind of, really really frustrating um way of training um and then so when i said to brent i'm like i just want to have fun with training mm. and then when i started i'm like fuck fun this is like not me yeah <laughs> i'm like i, I want to be really fun. good <laughs> yes yeah. and i mean being good and fun are kind of the same like i mean i'm, I'm not saying for that it's you, not it's fun the same for thing. me for me it's the same thing like being yeah. really good at something and that, that grinding out the weeks when like things aren't going well and like just nudging past that and then hopefully getting to a competition and hopefully winning or whatever is well, winning all I, of that is fun this conversation that you and i had privately you said to me he's like winning is fun yeah. mm-hmm. competing is fun being the best is fun yeah and that's like the competitive mindset for you definitely right? being in a prep is often not fun 
yeah. but then it's worth it because I get to go to the competition and win and then that makes it well and truly when worth you're, it. When you're living in it like day to day, sometimes like you love it and then there's other times you are like, fuck, this is really tough and this is hard, mm. but you're not ever in a point where you're like, fuck, I do not want to do this anymore. This is shit. I'm bored. Like I'm, you know, you'll have moments from time to time where you're like, oh, fuck, today's going to be really heavy and this is going to be hard and, and that sort of thing. But when it all comes together for you on comp day, like I, there's, there's an analogy that I use to, to just, sorry, Bows is just getting a little bit more into this wrapper here. Um, there's an analogy I use for Will. I'm like, Will throughout the year is a moth, right? He just kind of flutters around and he does his thing. On comp day, he turns into like this butterfly and he just comes out and he's all vibrant and there's all these different colors and different shades to him because he just can't sit still. Yeah. But throughout the rest of the year, he's just a quiet little dude that just kind of keeps to himself and plots along and ticks the boxes and just does his thing. So This like, raises a lot of questions about you for me. Uh, <laughs> You're okay. really into moths. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> but, like, it's just seeing, <laughs> it's seeing him – <laughs> on comp day come out of his shell and like just how much he loves that you know what mm. i mean so like he's he like becomes like an extra level of himself as, like, he's yeah. incredibly extroverted that people are just like they actually enjoy just watching will on comp day because he's like they know how quiet he is throughout the rest of the day and the week or whatever but on comp day he's like -la 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 -la. <laughs> and just like like kita comes up to me and she's like will's just so funny he doesn't shut up like he's just so chipper and ch and just like buzzes around and talks to everyone then he's like oh yeah okay i need to go squat this bar now and, like, da -da 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 -da, and he's just kind of like yeah but it's like a i know at that point all the the work that i put in that's my chance to show it and i enjoy yes. showing it like yes. hey i've done all this work here it check is check me out yeah i don't know it's, it's... check it check it and Kev did uh it. But you, Peacocking. you and I, <laughs> not quite. Uh, <clears throat> but you and I have discussed uh, at other times, and you've even done posts and stuff about it. About like, for you, it's not not about that. Yeah. Like what what makes what's fun to you? Like what's uh, about training or like what is uh, what was the post that you did? I forget what it was actually. It was, I think the one that you're probably referring to is when I was like, I want to be mid at everything. Mediocre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mediocre. Yeah, like yeah. yeah. Chasing mediocrity. Yes. And succeeding mediocrely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Being average versus athlete is kind of like the way that I see this, right? Yeah. Not that you're average by any means. Like I would definitely <laughs> say that you are above average at a lot of things that you do, but like you're happy being like average or yeah. mediocre or whatever. Whereas Will's like, I want to be like an athlete you know yeah. what i mean yeah. so yeah go into that a little bit more Unpack sorry I cut you off. yeah <laughs> what is this psychology yeah. <laughs> will's like what's wrong with you <laughs> yeah. um i think there's a couple of pieces to it i i always i sell it as i want to be average at everything but realistically i actually want to be better than average at everything mm. but where i want to be is not elite or top yeah. level yeah. and i think that comes partly from a recognition of how deep down a rabbit hole and how much singular time you have to spend on one thing to become truly great at it like i don't have to explain that to you yeah, like, yeah you absolutely know? i'll spend a whole year just for a 10 kilo pb on my squat yeah, yeah. which yeah. like and that is so respectable it's amazing to just be able to be that guy that sits there and grinds um but but i don't want to do it Mm. I'm like, I'd so much rather, like, if I could have 10 kilos less on my squat, but also be quite good at something else. And if I can collect little, like, I don't know, it's, it's like, it's like the infinity stones, you know, I feel mm. like you can have one real big fuck off infinity stone and like, that's sick, but I kind of want them all. Like, I want to mm. be like good enough at all mm. these things to feel like I've created like a more, um, I don't know, like well robust. Yeah, robust. It's like it's yeah. something about how I feel when I feel quite like rounded. I'm like I feel more resilient. My body feels good. I feel like I can kind of I've got the option to jump into anything that I mm -hmm. want to and I know that I've got a level of capability where if I start pushing myself down one rabbit hole, which I've done with my training before, like yeah. there was a time that I really did try to kind of like send it with weightlifting. Um and every time I've gone closer down one rabbit hole, I've ended up in a position where my body's just a bit like achy and creaky and old oh absolutely you yeah know? <clears throat> that's yeah, part like, of it that's your knee <laughs> if uh yeah that's all powerlifters in prep yeah like yeah. on my shoulders elbows yeah biceps knees hurt yeah whatever it's part of it it's part of it 
Yeah. But you do accept that and you also know that it's not long term and it's not permanent. And for you personally, I think. No, it's part, in my mind, that, that's part of the grind. That's part of like, you, well, yeah. you know, you know, it's, you know, it's part of it. Yeah. Mm. It comes with the territory. Um, we're always talking about like health and performance in most people are uh, very side by side. As yes. in like if somebody gets stronger and bigger, they typically get healthier. Mm. Then at a certain point up that performance spectrum, they absolutely go apart from each other. And that's like, that's, that's prep. That's specificity that's you, and all that sort of yeah, stuff. And yeah. And all those little niggles and stuff that you're talking about where you just like shit hurts and that that's, yeah. if you want to be good at literally anything, um, I'm sure you know elite gymnasts, mm. you know weightlifters, runners, marathon Tennis runners, players, oh my God. Everyone, every, yeah. fucking yeah. any sport at the top level. Like yeah. they're all they're all fucked up. And you need <laughs> but the thing is, is I think you need people like that to push the boundaries, right? Like no one probably ever thought that yeah. doing a sub hundred meter, uh, like a sub ten hundred meter sprint was ever really possible. Yes. You know what I mean? You need those elite specialists out there that are just pushing freak of nature numbers to show what the human body is actually capable of doing right totally, and that yeah. shit's exciting that's what that's the sort of stuff that you see on the tvs mm-hmm. and you know that make high level athletes and sports and all that sort of stuff like that everyone tunes into it's the same thing with like music and stuff like that as well right like you need people out there pushing boundaries challenging things just doing different shit um and that's like where you want to live you know what i mean like you want to live in that like i want to push extremes and i want to do shit that i think my body is like that i don't know whether or not it's capable but i want to fucking test it you know what i mean scary and that's that's fun yeah you like living in that that's exciting for you yeah, I was actually speaking to a sports psychologist about it when I went through that. Okay, let's change change directions a little bit and do some weightlifting and stuff because I couldn't, couldn't squat. Um, and I said to her, I'm like, I I know myself and I have to be very careful that weightlifting doesn't become like... An obsession. Yeah, like I want to fucking win this now. Mm. Like I just, I just, yeah, I know that like my brain can just at a snap of a finger just end up going down that and then all of a sudden I'll end up just hating that too mm. or like hating that, that training. And, uh, because yeah. And, and I, my goal was always to come back to powerlifting with it, but, um, I just, yeah, I, I know that my brain just can go there really easily and then just end up in a really bad place with it. What you've done, I think, and you saw it with the powerlifting. I don't think that video is even out yet. Um, On YouTube. <clears throat> You I've seen a little bit on Instagram and stuff like that. Yeah, but there was one yeah video I don't think the full out, videos. But out. I don't think anything long form. Yeah. But what the, well, what your style of training now and kind of mixing it up in different uh, directions has done has allowed you to build like a really big base. Mm. And I'm sure that if you went into powerlifting and said, "Okay, I'm going to spend six to twelve months just going hard on powerlifting or going hard on weightlifting," and that you could easily be within the top, you know whatever 10 15 percent of people mm. in those competitions yeah and i think that's kind of like that's where the name infinite came from for the program that has just gone out to gambaru because the whole thing is like i want there to be infinite possibilities for myself i want the biggest base and that way like and that's the thing right the bigger base of the pyramid allows you to build taller mm. um so you can you can change direction you have a big enough base to be able to go and do that thing um and i've always wanted that optionality and so I like the fact that I can be like, cool, it's weightlifting season. Let's fuck around and find out. Let's see if I can get that 70, maybe even get that 75 again and not drop it on myself, you know, like, or, or push past those things. But I also want to be able to change direction and be like, you know what's next? Sprinting. Like, I'm going to compete in that. Yeah. Um, and I'll, I think I'll race just, you again. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm faster now. <laughs> I bet you are. <laughs> You've had some more and skills training. training. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jack Edwards gave me one. Oh, yeah. We're moving. Yeah. <laughs> she got speed. The, the thing is, like, if we bring the, both of these worlds and both these mindsets into training for, for other people, mm. uh, they're both very useful mindsets to switch between. Yeah. As in, like, uh, if you're in a in a comp prep for whatever and and you're hitting a lot of if it's powerlifting SBD and smashing that like you really need to be hyper focused on that and all the other work in the program is I'm not going to say it's not important nobody should be sandbagging their accessories or whatever but it's like it's less important like yeah, it's really not going to make a huge difference to the outcome most yeah. likely but you might you know might get beat up and everything a little bit more long term it's going not going to be good for you 
Uh, and then during an off season, it could be more like your training, like a powerlifter's off season could be more like your training where you're trying to develop the base and you're trying to develop lots of different skills in lots of different ways. And uh, it would be really beneficial in my mind to longevity and just like uh, avoiding overuse injuries yeah. and those sort of things that, that um, the powerlifting and weightlifting often end up developing because training is the sport and it's very easy to just do the same thing year round. Yeah. Uh, so I think they, they both, uh, both the, what our training will look like, but also both the, the mentals could be applied to, to anybody and just learn when to switch between those people and know when to switch between them and to, to get the best results out of your training. Yeah, hundred percent. Like you make a real superhuman if you can do both, right? If you can flip the switch and go into comp mode like you do easily, yeah. um, but still be able to, you know, happily work hard across the spectrum. Cause it is like, what I do is just GPP, right? Like at the end of the day, it's just, it's just, it's yeah. just build, base building stuff which yeah. you need in any sport um it's just knowing when to dial up and dial down the different pieces so that you can and also like specificity or what not. i guess what attributes it is that you actually need to be working on yes you know what i yeah. mean like will i don't think that running like running 25 k's for example sure that could probably help him out a little bit with his training and his work capacity but does he need to go straight like to that extreme of the in that attribute probably not no. you know what i mean like there'd definitely be benefits in carrier it was like him doing a 100 meter sprint like he doesn't need to get really really good at like sprints training or anything like that but that overall like that attribute could have carry over to improving his base of you know powerlifting performance and stuff like that mm. um thankfully if you can use constraints with most of them like the sprinting mm -hmm. with with uh the gymnastics the stuff that you showed me and eugene you can use these constraints to get enough of the exposure at a very kind of low risk profile. Mm. Whereas if you just go like, I'm a hybrid athlete now, I've never ran in my life, but I'm going to go to a hundred meter sprint Ascended. off the bat yeah. or mm. I'm going to just go, you know, just do like a full gymnastics workout, but like the harder shit, like, and just, just kind of force it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah there's, there's ways to introduce it. So don't take this as a, Hey, you're a power through your off season and then and just, Go start an average Joe everything every other day without yeah. uh, consideration of what like a start point. Finding the start point is really important to it. I just definitely like I feel at the moment, and I don't know if you're seeing this as well, Will, but I definitely see. Sorry, Bass is being a pest. I definitely see there is a little bit of like bashing towards being like a power lifter. Right. Because I don't know the, if you like, are you seeing that. You know what I mean? Like this are like powerlifters are walking fridges and they're stiff boards and they should be they have to do all these different things. They should stop being so specific and stuff like that. Like are you do you guys see much of that sort of stuff on the social like on socials at the moment? Like I even saw this guy um I don't think that exact message is is perpetuated much. Um but it's just a misunderstanding of it mm. because like realistically I think uh, when you say these negative things like that, they're not really negative. It is the sport. Like yeah. it's literally like how you get good at it. Like it's being in powerlifting, we get underneath a bar and like, I really don't want to be rotating with a 300 kilo squat. So I, I'm not good at rotation. Like mm -hmm. I'm, my body's just not good at it because I actively am doing anti that a lot yeah. of the time. Uh, and so yeah, powerlifting does create stiff people. And it does create fridges and like whatever you want to fuck you want to call it in some yeah. negative way. But it's not it's, to me, it's not a negative thing. It's called being good at the thing. There's there and was, every sport has that, by the way. Yes. Yeah. Like, there was one post in particular that I saw um, of a, of a guy who does like rowing and ski ergs and stuff like that. And he's like, oh, my client was um, a, an ex power lifter. Um, one of our old clients actually at one point, many, many years ago. Mm. Um, but uh, he's like, yeah, he was really unhealthy as a power lifter, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, hold on, you're pigeonholing power lifting as being unhealthy and it's not, mm. you know, like he's not unhealthy because he was a power lifter. He was unhealthy because he was probably unhealthy and didn't do like things to improve his health markers. Like, do you cardio, get that in like, like, yeah, sorry. Do you get Fine. it in gymnasts, in the gymnast world? Do you get it in like, do you go, oh yeah, gymnasts uh, have small legs or something like, I don't know, like but that, that's not, like or any. the equivalent? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like what's things the that for people you? say like is a negative, but it's actually just fucking. It's just the sport. The sport mm -hmm. and how you're good at it. I mean, I think, I, I can't think of an exact gymnastics example because there is quite a lot of inherent variability in movement in gymnastics. So mm. like 
that in in some ways that's protective but a lot of high level gymnasts are injured because they're mm. still doing a high volume of similar movements at the end of the day right yeah, yeah. and like yeah you have to do the thing to get good at it. yeah and whatever the sporting outcome is long term like for your example stiffness is a thing that you need to do full body stiffness not rotating not bending not like you know those are qualities that get trained in anytime you get to a high level in a sport so like I don't know that we should say like, oh, power lifters are shit or power lifters can't do this, whatever. But it's like, yeah. if you push your training really far in any singular direction, that yeah. is an outcome that will happen. As you said, yeah. it is reversible. Yeah. But maybe what is happening and maybe what is getting some pushback is people spending their entire lives training like that without going back to the base building stuff yes. and doing some of the, you know, we can call it cross training or like you can call it whatever you want, but it's just not doing only the same three movements ever for the rest of your life. Kind yeah. Of stuff. Yeah. Um, and I think like looking back on when CrossFit really started blowing up in the industry, for example, mm -hmm. um, there was a phase where like a lot of CrossFit boxes were getting bashed because like technique wasn't being addressed. Like, yeah. do you remember? I mean, this yeah. was probably like, it was before I was in CrossFit, but yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. Like 10, yeah. 15 years ago, there was a phase where like everyone was bashing cross all these CrossFit still now. boxes that were still, up. still now yeah, people, still have, that, yeah. people yeah. have that attitude still because they don't realize that CrossFit is very different now to what it was in mm. the, in the boom phase. Yeah. When, when, because how many CrossFit boxes are there now? Like, fuck all compared to when it was, like, huge. Yeah. Yeah, I, sh I don't know the numbers on that. But it would be, I know it would that be it's changed less. substantially. Yeah, it was, like, yeah. the whole field is quite different. To what From what I've seen, a lot of the... Because I think even having the name CrossFit, there was a fee associated to it, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've just raised the fee yeah. this year. Really? Beginning of this year. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, that's why people call X fit and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> They're so sneaky. <laughs> but I did... Um, the, that's kind of, from what I understand, changed a lot because a lot of the not so good CrossFit people that just jumped on the bandwagon of of the hype uh, have kind of left, or their gyms have kind of failed for for that reason. They're not really into it, right? And then uh, the what we're left with now is like in all the CrossFit boxes I see that are still open today are, are much better, pretty good, mm. yeah. yeah, yeah, more well rounded coaches and stuff like that, yeah. Is there anything more on the uh, mediocre mindset of Anna that you wanted to kind of get into before <clears throat> before we pivot into the No, the I thought it was topic. just an interesting comparison of mm. like how – Is there think, anything more that you And you're doing a weightlifting comp coming up. So, I mean, it's like it's, you're still – there's still that – There is really like competitiveness. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I think that's kind of the thing is recognizing that it's not that specificity is unwelcome. It's just being able to change gears for me is something that I really value. Yeah, yeah um, absolutely. And, and I would say that the compromise of that is I am not as good at the, at that athlete mindset that you, as you might be. Um, I mean, I, I know for a fact that I'm not like, I am, I am quite a wuss when it comes to some stuff. Yeah. Um, and I, that's probably one of my like maybe weaker points in my game. Like I've, I know I have the upper body strength. I know I have even the lower body strength. Like I, I have all the movement. My movement capability is decent. Like my coach watches me. He's like, you are a good technical athlete. Like this is not mm. like the reason you're missing these is not your body. Yeah. Um, it's the mental resilience it's and the fortitude. Mental, yeah. Yeah. Um, and when I decided, like when I made the decision not to go any deeper into the world of competitive CrossFit, it was the same thing where I was just like, the mental cost to me of making that choice to like try to get to Torian level, like go to semifinals kind of stuff. I was just like, I personally don't want to live that life. Yep. And it wasn't, it was both the things I would have to give up. And it was also the recognition of not how far my body was from the capability, but how far my mind was from that capability and just being like, you know what? That's a, that's a long way away for me and mm. I'm, I'm not going to climb that mountain because I could climb another one mm -hmm. or another five in that time, you know? Yeah. 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 And yeah. have fun doing that. And like at the end of the day, like we're not saying that one is better than the other, you know, like you can kind of hopefully cross between both mm. uh, different phases of, of your life. Um, it's just interesting to have two people with two different perspectives sitting down and having a conversation over it. You know yeah. what I mean? That's why, that's why we wanted to yeah. sort of bring that today. Yeah, the other thing that we wanted to jump into is just a conversation that you and I had around just coaching and ways of coaching and 
uh, again, I don't want this to turn. I don't want this to turn into a shit on the industry, so I have to be careful with how I word it. But it's just like these days with AI, with technology, with everything going the way it is, it's it's much more common for, and we're we're a part of it too, um, for like uh, a program only only type service, yeah, uh, like a uh, an app or whatever or whatever it is, a PDF or whatever, something that you're just going to get where it's just a program and just maybe a little bit of information. And there's not really coaching involved. There's much less communication involved. And uh, we talked about that uh, and about how we coach mm. and about how important communication was to you and how it was to me. And uh, <laughs> we're aware, absolutely <laughs> got an absolute pest dog in here. Um, and how that's uh, affected it's just our, our outlook on the industry. Because like, like I said, I don't want to turn into a shitting on people who do it different ways because I think people can get can do it different ways and there are going to be people out there that want it in different ways. Yeah. But to me, I don't think I could coach people uh, the way I want to coach and get the outcomes that I want to get and work with the people that I do without uh, the amount of, I just think communication uh, is, is a big thing. Like for us, communication is our number one thing. Like we're all of our clients, we offer calls, we offer messaging. And, and I know that it's a like, you know, if you go to a business coach, they're like don't offer 24 seven messaging. Like, you know, you don't want to be messaging back at 2 AM. They have, we have restraints. We definitely have some boundaries. restraints about it. But to me, I'm just like, to my guys, I'm like, if you need me, message me. If I'm not there, I won't answer. Yeah. <laughs> but if I'm there, I'll answer. Yeah. Like, that's what, yeah. that's what I'm there for yeah. in my mind. Um, and we do like Loom videos and just a, a whole heap of different ways to actually get a message across to a client. So it's not just calls and messages and stuff like that. Cause there's people respond to a bunch of different things. Mm. Um, God, but, I love Loom. Yeah. Loom yeah. is life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good service, that one. Yeah. It's easier in some ways. But, um, yeah, so so tell us, like, how you run your service, how you're coaching people, mm. uh, and how much value you put in, in all these things. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a valid point, right? Because especially, as, like, as you said, AI is it's, – it's really in its glow-up era, and we're going to see – coaches who can only offer the programming component replaced by computers that can do it just as well. It's still there now. Like you go to Lift Vault or whatever it is, or yeah, one of those and you download done. a million free programs. Easy. Yeah. And they're all good. Trust me. Yeah. And that's the thing is like, <laughs> they're not bad. The, the, yeah. The program itself might be perfectly fine. Mm. Um, and programs work, right? Like even bad programs work. So like a lot Definitely. of the time. And then, and, and so that's where a coach, like if you can get that extra, extra little bits and pieces out of someone by providing that feedback or even just providing the right relationship that can be a really important um, piece of value for people. So I, I, mine is probably very similar to yours, how I run mine, but uh, like they get a weekly full, full size check-in with a loom video. I'm looking at any of the technique videos that they've sent in. Um, I have two tiers, like I have a slightly more expensive one and a slightly cheaper one. And the only difference is the cheaper one. I have a cap on how many videos they can send me. So okay. I'm like, if you want lots of hand-holding, if you want me to watch your bicep curls, yeah, babes, that's fine. Send them <laughs> through, but you're going to pay me more because it's going to yeah, take yeah, me yeah. more time to spend yeah, watch, yeah. watching you do your, your curls. Yeah. Um, whereas if I'm watching, you know, you and you've stitched together six bar muscle-ups into one clip and that's one of your 12 videos, great, sweet, sold, done. Yeah. Um, and that, what about yeah, calls? Like, how are they, how are they, are they important to you? I love, like, I love constant comms with clients. Like, we would all love to just have it where where you just chat to people when we want or it, God, it, have, have it as in person i'd love a weekly hour-long call with all of them but i'd run out of hours you absolutely know? Yeah, yeah. yeah yeah um but i am that person. like i know some coaches that are just like i want as little comms as possible with my clients i just want them to like grow up and execute it themselves because they're adults and they should be and i'm like no the client ath or sorry mm. the athlete coach relationship goes a really long way in a building your understanding of what's going to help them get over the line B, them building their own understanding of what's going to get them over the line and then see you two working together to build the program and the style of communication that works best for everyone. Like there is, there's a, I don't know, there's like a curation there that takes time and comms. Like you don't get that for free. Um, and 
I don't know, like that's the best part of coaching is having that relationship with someone and knowing that you're kind of like positively influencing each other in the right direction that's going to help them with their long-term goals. Yeah, that whole, you know, lifters should just, you know, learn to be better. Yeah. I can definitely say that because if you just completely baby somebody oh, yeah. and be like, oh, no, I'm always here and they're messaging you going like, oh, what weight should I do next? Like I just did, I just did this. Like. Yeah. Yeah, the, there becomes a, yeah, there becomes a level <laughs> no. where it's just like you're yeah. not actually helping at yeah. that point. You're yeah. you're teaching them to not think. Yeah. And at some point, you're gonna have to think for yourself because yeah. I, I hope you leave one day, yeah. kind of. You know what I mean? Um, because there's there's gonna be moments uh, if you're planning to compete. There's gonna be moments on the day where you're gonna need to like make decisions and, uh, uh, yeah, you need to understand the process and understand how to come to those conclusions. But there is another end of it where. I just don't think that's true. Whereas like lifters need to develop into this fully autonomous person because I know I'm, I'm not like that. No, and neither. I coach a lot of elite, elite, elite level lifters yeah. that are far from that. Yeah. They're, some of them are worse than the beginner, like less autonomous than them. Yeah. Right. Like just, I don't think it's a, it's even a, a, a level thing, like a where they're at or how strong they're at or mm. anything like that. I think it's just a personality thing. Yeah. And some people need a shoulder to cry on and some people, uh, you know, I'll, I'll literally get a, some of my clients, I'll get a, I'll get a message from every three weeks, even though they pay to talk every week and do the things. And I'll be like, fuck, is, have, have I fucked up? Like, does this person hate me or have yeah. I said something wrong or <laughs> yeah, yeah. am I not good? And then, I'll eventually get a hold of them and then they'll be like, oh no, everything's great. It's gone really good. So I just haven't had to message you. And I was like, hmm, <laughs> like, please, please don't do that. <laughs> do, do more. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Like to I've me. Got a couple of those. Yeah. But. Which is like, I'm like, I kind of get that as well. If that's, if you're that happy to be looking after yourself, that is sweet. As long as I know that that's where your headspace is. Just like, make sure you tell me we good. Send, me, send me that thumbs up emoji, yeah, you yeah. know, like. <laughs> just like it's okay if we don't have to check in every week but i'm like i'm mm. i'm the opposite end of the spectrum i'm the person who wants hand holding i'm like and I, I wouldn't i would never message a coach and be like should i put the weight up on the next set but you know i will tell them like hey there was this stressor today that impact that may have impacted my lifting i don't know i'm you like they'll though I'm, I may be over communicative, but I'd rather be over communicative than under communicative because i like that from my clients as well um, you're terrible at communicating with your coaches yeah, absolutely. I don't know if you've gone into that, but you are absolutely terrible at communicating with your coaches. <laughs> like I remember when Matt was um, doing your, your programming and stuff like that, I would have to like, it's like he'd send me a message like, hey, uh, how's Will going? Like I haven't heard from him in oh. like a month. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. That's not true. Not a month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you talk to him on Instagram through just yeah, like yeah, yeah. random stuff, but it's not like programming or like training or any videos or anything like that. So um, anyone who's coached Will knows that, like, if you don't hear from him, things are either, like, absolutely terrible or things are going really, really well. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> yeah, we can uh, – for me, it's, uh, like, I, I I really should be bringing certain problems to their attention and getting – bouncing ideas from them. But um, after so long in the game, sometimes I'm just like, this isn't a problem that you can solve. Right. And I'm just like, I'm just going to deal with this, yep. even though I should, I shouldn't be like that. <laughs> um, but it's just like, uh, just how the brain works and I'll bring it to other people. Yeah. So like yeah. the psychologist or to the nutritionist or to the whatever and, and deal with it with, and not get the full spectrum, not get everybody on the same page. That's my yeah. problem yeah. Mm, yeah. with that. Some of the best coaches make the worst athletes, like clients, I should say. Some yeah. of the best coaches make the worst clients. Yes. That makes sense. Because um, they think so much about everyone else and what everyone else is doing. They don't think about like, oh, yeah, I need to like give my coach the same level of feedback and, yeah. and whatever. So, yeah. But, what? Um, how much of your roster is like coaches? Quite a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's the same yeah, for us. I think um, like at least a third, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Do you find you have to treat them differently? No, not. Not as differently as I think I originally thought. I think really the only difference is just the language that we use. Like it's, you know, when you're talking to another coach, you, you can, you don't have, 
not that I dumb things down for athletes, but I'm going to use different. I'm going to use client facing language. I'm not going to say like, of course, yeah, this external rotator muscle. You know, like you're just not going to do that shit. Yeah. You're just going to. Be I don't like, even think Will speaks to people like that, like like other coaches like that, because you just they assume, need to. Yeah, they just know. Like you assume they yeah. know. Yeah, but yeah. assumption obviously isn't great either. Well, yeah. there is a difference uh, that I used to think was a lot more of a difference between them, and that that's that. Uh, my coach clients would be way more explanation on like why a change is there and yeah. how, because I wanted them to take that and then maybe apply that to their clients or like mm-hmm. just teach them to be a better coach as well as a, a better lifter. But then uh, the more and more I've coached, the more I've realized that that is a big part of a client's journey as well. Yes. Uh, like a lifter's journey that isn't a coach um, purely because when people know, why they're doing things deeply and they have a deep understanding of like, I'm doing bicep curls because of blur. Yeah. Like no matter how simple the explanation is, whatever we're just, we put way more effort into it and we like try harder and we actually do it. Like I'm not going to skip it and go like, ah, I don't need to do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like with just understanding. So like it's these days, the, the comms are much less different. Yeah, it's very mm. similar. I would say mm. like, yeah, literally the only thing is maybe the word selection mm. by a small bit. And like, even like I try to use the client's language as much as possible. Like if a coach were to say like, I really, I'm using my lats a lot more here, then I'll start using muscle language. Whereas most of the time I don't use muscle language, I use position language. Mm. Uh, And so like, it's only when other people bring in those topics and it might be a coach person. It might not be a coach person. It might just be a highly interested client person. Mm. Um, So yeah. I think like, I I don't know about you, but I like to use my, my clients' words, like, against them as well and from time to time. Like, I'll challenge their thought patterns or I'll challenge yeah. them. So, yeah. like, not against them in a sense, but it's, like, you're just using the exact same language that they're comfortable communicating with so they have a better understanding of your dialect and what you're trying to yeah. to get across. And, you know, so when I say I'm, like, challenging them or against them or something like that, it's like, hey, you've said X, Y, Z. Why don't we try, like, one, two, three instead? Yeah. Um that's kind of how I would. Uh, well, in nutrition, that's massive. Mindset is everything. Yes, yeah. yeah. It's I'm more of a mindset coach than I'm a nutrition coach. Yeah, it's a different, coach. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a different game. Yeah, but um, yeah. Anyway, so I miss obviously a lot of what you guys were talking about. Thanks, Bowser. But um, <laughs> like, have you talked about different communication frequency as well? Like, obviously, we have different communication frequencies in the sense that. We offer a monthly program and we also offer a weekly program and the difference between communication on each of those platforms. Like how often are all of your check-ins and, and all that sort of stuff, is it all one frequency, check-in frequency, or do you have different levels of tiers based on the support level that people want or need? Yeah, okay. so I ha- I was saying, well, I have two tiers mm-hmm. and the more expensive one is just, like I, I, I tell people, it's for the needier clients. It's for mm-hmm. the people who want more touch base <clears throat> everyone gets some form of contact weekly yeah um people who pay for the higher subscription get a detailed loom every single week all of that stuff they might get a refreshment of the program depending on what's happening um so that higher tier is like as much hand holding as you can get and mm-hmm. like we might be messaging in the week as well and then the slightly lower tier i still look at the program every week and i still will message them every week but it'll be like a hey how's training i saw this in your program what was driving that. And then sometimes I'll look at it and I'll be like, oh fuck, actually I've got 12 videos to review from them. I'll just do a loom. Like, so I probably, I was, I used to be much more separate on the two different tiers and what they offered, but I keep bringing it closer to a higher check-in frequency or a higher comms frequency because I prefer it. It's not Mm -hmm. even what they've asked for. It's just I find it harder to coach somebody on lower comms. I've always found when we've done, try to have a lower communication model in the past that, I get to go, all right, uh, like they haven't told me a lot of the stuff because that's what they're paying for. And then yeah. I go to write the program. I'm like, fuck, like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. know any, yeah, I don't know. And <laughs> yeah. then I end up having a call yeah. with them anyway. And I'm yeah. like, this is stupid. Like now I'm wasting, yeah, like yeah. I didn't actually. The, our nutrition used to be similar with the autonomous and stuff like that, the, where yeah. we had these two separate kind of like needier and or like less needy people. Yeah. And it, similar it to called... you, it ended up coming together because we ended up, you know, going like actually – somewhere in between these or whatever is the best way that we get 
you know, the best outcomes from. Yeah. And so like, we're just going to do that for everybody. And then yeah. it was the frequency of how yeah. delivered. So, so we, went we had what was called comprehensive and autonomous. Mm-hmm. And this is probably some um, unsolicited business advice. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose. Go on. But I found that because they were merging so much, we had a lot of people that were paying a higher tier service and then they would go down to the lower tier service. Go, Oh, I don't need that much comprehensive check-in anymore. I want to go down to the other one, but I was still providing the same level of support as what the higher tier service was. So we had comprehensive and autonomous comprehensive. You had like your meal plans or or education support for people that were either new to nutrition and didn't really understand things. Um, Or, and then the autonomous was for, you know, athletes that just needed support and accountability and stuff like that. But we often found that the people that were in the autonomous, they're like, no, 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 I don't need as much education. I'm good. Like, you know, I'm, I'm happy just to pay, you know, this price point, that's more what I can afford, blah, blah, blah. But we would still provide, you know, all the extras and stuff like that. So it just became really, really muddled. Yeah. And I was like, I would rather pay, I would rather offer the comprehensive service, um, but have the difference between the, the frequency of check-in. So yeah. like if someone, um, like some of my athletes that are like, I don't need to talk to you every single week. Like yeah. I'm pretty chill. Like I get what I need to do and I just yeah. need you to like, give me a kick in the ass, um, call me out on my shit, whatever. And like doing that fortnightly with the data that we had required from them was mm-hmm. Like, that's enough that was enough yeah. Yeah. um and then the other people that were like look i re- i want more contact time i want more support i want more education i want more accountability okay well then they would have the weekly check-in yeah but for both of those services we have monthly calls yeah. so regardless of what tier you're on you're going to have a phone call with us once a month and then the communication outside of that was based on what you feel like you need and the services within that were exactly the same. They were mirror images. So if you want macros only, you would get macros. If you want a meal plan, then you got a meal plan. And so it was just about distinguishing um, the frequency of our check-ins. And it was the same sort of thing with our, our programming services too. Like both have a monthly call. If, if they, if people like the weekly people for will, you probably don't have monthly phone calls with all the time because you talk to them so bloody much across the week and across mm. the month anyways but they can have a call with you once a month if they feel like they need it whereas the monthly people like you're like i want to have a phone call with you once a month because i haven't had spoken. communication yeah. with you throughout the course of the month yeah so and it's just about i guess setting better boundaries with your clients and stuff like that around it because it just gets really <laughs> overwhelming sometimes if people are messaging you all the goddamn time yeah yeah, yeah. on both sides on both the, the services side of it it was like the, the thinking is for us is literally what is the, how can I get the best possible results? I'm just going to do that. And then how much time into it is like I put into it, which is correlates with the check-in frequency mm. is, uh, is like the levels yeah. is, is like the difference in the, in what you're going to pay. Yeah. For me, it was trying like, to exp- also way easy to explain by the way. Yeah. True. So you're not like, yeah. are you, you not going like, Am I it, autonomous it, or am I comprehensive? Are you, are you I, I don't needy? Know. Yeah. I don't know. And then they're like, no, nah, I swear I'm not. And I'm like, mm. Yeah, but you are though. We had, a, we, had, we had quite a few people that were on autonomous that were so fucking needy. Right. And we were just like, comprehensive. yeah, but yeah. how do you tell someone, how, by the way, I need you paying an extra $25 a week because you're actually needier than what you think you are. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like that position to yeah, be in. Yeah, it's, like, it's not nice. Yeah. Um, And so that's why I was like, I'm – comfortable providing this level of service this is what i really want to offer for all of my clients yeah but now it's just a matter of how often i do that for them weekly or fortnightly and that was just what made nutrition for us so much easier and it also meant that we could help more people Mm. because we had that fortnightly check in availability now that we could open up like 10 or 20 more spots a week great on the opposite week so i'm like one I'm in this industry to help people. Now I can just help 20 more people by offering right. it on other days yeah. um, versus like only being able to help a select few yeah. throughout that one week. So it was just really, really tight for us. That's so cool. um, I guess it's a similar sort of thing with your services. Like if you have yeah. a look over, like how much am I really off? Like, do you, have you ever had that conversation with someone where like, Hey, you're more comprehensive and you're more needy than what you really yeah. think you are. I have. Yeah. How do you handle that? Um, well, because I'd had like the like the the way for my programming that I distinguish between the two mm. is just like it's a cap of videos. Yeah. Is like the number one thing. And 
one person who had gone for the lower tier option in his first week. I'll never forget it because he sent me 44 videos Holy in shit. the first week. And I was like, that is the largest number of videos I've ever received. Since then, someone sent me 84. But <laughs> um, but you, you find a rhythm with people over time and yeah. they start to understand how many videos you actually need to see for them to get it. Yeah. For, for both of you to get a picture of what's happening. I was going to say, um, that's not actually that bad of a thing. Because like, to me, I'm like, give me in the first week or first two weeks, give me as much as you can. Cause I can see yeah. if you do send me videos, of your bicep curls, at least like, and they're good. Uh, I okay, probably don't need no, no more you. videos. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, no more videos of bicep curls. We're nowhere good. I'm, yeah, you're good. 100%. Just do that again. Yeah. Um, so. Which like in the first week, you're just kind of like, sweet. Thanks for giving me that. Like next time I just make sure you send me videos of these few things. And it, yeah, like, exactly. You know, yeah, like yeah, yeah. In, in, in week one, I'm never going to be like, oh my God, what are you going to do? But yeah. you know, you want to set the expectations though, yeah. from yeah. like within the first month. Cause that's where like, if you don't, then boundaries are very easily yeah. crossed. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. That's so, the hard thing when you provide, like when you want to offer more communication and more support and, and whatever, it's like lines can very easily get blurred for people if you don't hold those yes. expectations and boundaries and yeah. stuff like that. 100%. I think that's the only issue and why a lot of people are going to like the program only service and stuff. Cause they're like, I just don't want to deal with people's emotions and I don't want to deal with that. And I just remove myself from the picture, I suppose. Yeah. Which I don't feel like I really understand because I'm like, A, now your job is that of a computer and B, you're not really a coach. Like you're, you're just kind of, people. you're a programmer, which yeah. is I'm not, you're not even not, a programmer, you're a marketer. Yeah. Really, let's be um, honest. Mm. Yeah. So to to me, like a coach is an interpersonal job. Yes. And if it if you don't set it up in a way that your interpersonal skills are being leveraged, then I'm not I'm not entirely sure what you're offering beyond like potentially being better at programming than a computer. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I probably also think that because I like the coaching part of mm. the job, you know, like maybe maybe someone else can prove me. Well, wrong. I think. I mean. Let, yeah. I guess when you go into that, it's like, how are you able to write better programs if you don't understand what's going on in that person's life? Yes. Like, how are you able to write a really good program for that person yeah. if you're not treating the human element? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and I, I think the, the blanket response to that is like, well, they should, they should figure out how to auto-regulate. And I'm like, yeah, they should, because we coach them beings. how to do that yeah. over the course of time. Yeah. <laughs> like, but you know, also, it's a collaborative effort. Exactly. But. Um, but they're also human beings with lives where unexpected stress occurs at any point yeah. and you need to be able to help navigate people through that sort of stuff. Yeah. So yeah, within your scope. Much easier said than done to auto-regulate stuff too. Yeah. Like, we've all been guilty of being like, I know I'm stressed and underslept and under, uh, under eating and, and all that stuff, but I want to do more than last week. Yeah. So, you know, I'm like, the worst for it. Like I go in and I'm like, I feel like trash, but I'm a big dog and I'm not yeah, a big dog. Harder. <laughs> like, I'll just do more. And yeah, she didn't unfortunately doesn't work like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and also just to, just to round this off, this conversation off on the, um, uh, I'm not saying that those, there's more other, the other side of it is bad either. Cause like Mickey Mi, Mi, said, right at the start, we both um, have programs uh, on Gambaru. Yeah, totally. And I think, yeah. I think it, Gambaru is actually a really good place for that style of thing because you have lots of different options from lot, from both of us and lots of other coaches in there We've to expose Alec you. In there now, so that's yeah. really cool. Weapon. Yeah. Some endurance stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's some exposed to like so many different styles of training. So mm -hmm. somebody who's, who's new ish, maybe they've got past the, the rank beginner stage, Yeah. but like they've come into the gym now. They're like, mm, I'm not sure what I want to do, whether I want to be a powerlifter or a weightlifter or a bodybuilder or a gymnast or a runner or like whatever, a kind of meh. I don't like, I want to focus on something, but I have no idea. Bam. Perfect product to trial that shit out Yes. and then go, okay, like I've decided I want to do uh, running. So I'm going to go on higher. Alec or I'm, I'm gonna yeah. you know it's yeah, a, to actually coach me yeah. so to yeah. me they're they're kind of gateway products to yeah uh, to get referrals in. to more specialists in whatever it is that you want to do yeah yeah and even honestly though like even in Gambaru like the people that I feel most excited about coaching are the people who will like ask for video feedback Mm. Absolutely. In the Facebook group, I'm like, oh fuck yeah, mm. let's go! Like, yeah, yeah we've you're got a few invested. Of our, a few let's of our guys, because um, that's just what we naturally part like 
part of the gym service here that we had. So we've been telling all of our guys like chunky videos in there. So I feel like we've seen more like Nexus athletes uploading some videos in there yeah, than cool. like, cause I don't know the population of that now, but I, I recall when we were first talking to him, there was like over 15,000 people in that app. That's probably considerably more now with a lot of his partners and stuff like that. Yeah. So um, to have that many people, like you want to make sure that, you know, not, unfortunately not a lot of them are actually utilizing that, lifting forum platform but you yeah. want to make sure that they're in there that you're building those relationships because there's yeah. people watch without you realizing that they're watching as well so yeah yeah so good opportunities to to create referrals to your services or create relationships at the end of the day trust buy-in all that mm -hmm. sort of stuff anyways is there anything else you wanted to go over uh no no, it's a bit of a very, I'm sure, a very different conversation to what you usually have on these, talking about gymnastics and weightlifting and training more. But um, it's good to have a you know conversation. It's I like it. different, a bit of everything, a bit yeah. of a different direction. Variety, and, yeah. but infinite, if you will. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's just plugging it. Yeah, just always plugging drop it. it. Yeah, just keep it in there. Yeah, so Stay um, enough times they'll buy it. Use right? our <laughs> Nexus Gambaru link below. <laughs> We won't link Anna's. <laughs> Fuck yeah. her affiliate code. Yeah, use our affiliate code and then go on your program. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We don't care. Next is at checkout for your discounts. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, cool. Well, thanks very much for jumping in. Uh, and obviously, we'll go downstairs now and Train. Make, we'll do some flippy floppy things or whatever. Yeah. Teach make him do a forward roll. Yeah. Can you roll? <laughs> or do you, do you, is it like a square? Do you fall from one edge to the other? Well, it's like a wombat poo. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like mostly square, but a little bit. <laughs> a little <round. laughs> we'll see. I can, I can okay. roll. Yeah, easy. Easy. All right. We'll Just see. Just the first half of the roll. Yeah. So, right. Yeah. Thank you for listening to the Nexus Unloaded podcast. Be sure to jump on our website to find details on everything mentioned in the podcast today. Plus, information on our coaching, mentoring, and gyms based in the Gold Coast and Townsville. Make sure you follow us on our Instagram for any updates on what we are currently doing, and we'll see you all in the next episode.